People died. Panyaza came in his shirts that make him like a little fake Mandela. After a building has killed people, he came there, little fake Mandela, with Mandela shirts. Salute PA salute Pagama PA Pagama Pagama PA Pagama Kula PA Kula Kula PA Kula Amanda Awe tu Mata Aruna Salute the incoming president Mackenzie salute Salute the incoming President Mackenzie. Salute. Salute. Long live President Mackenzie. Long live. Salute. Long live President Mackenzie. Long live. Salute. Long live President. 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 Long live. Salute. Thank you very much, patriots. I was written a very long speech here. I'm going to put it under this document that I will read to you later. Let me recognize the person that God took out my rib and formed her so that she can be my mother, my sister, my best friend, my confidant, my wife. Let me acknowledge the presence of the National Treasurer General of the Patriotic Alliance, who is also the MMC of Human Settlement in the city of Johannesburg, uh, leader, pat uh, patriot, Anthea Leach. May you please stand so that they can see you. This is the person that we beg money from. Let me acknowledge the head, national head of strategy and negotiations, leader Charles Siliers. Let me recognize the deputy secretary general of the Patriotic Woman Alliance, leader Victoria Let me recognize the presence of the Premier of the Northwest who has come to give us support, Lida Lorato Matupa. Let me recognize the presence, patriots, of the national spokesperson, the head of communications at Patriotic Alliance, leader Steve Mutali. I want to also recognize the councillors that are here from all the regions of Gauteng. You are all acknowledged. <laughs> Let me also recognize my family that is here, my children. Only the small ones could not make it because they can't vote. <laughs> so uh, the president says, my family will give me all the votes to be the premier. <laughs> A patriot, I'm going to start first by telling you where we are. 
And what am I going to do about that? Amilcar Cabral, a true revolutionary, once said, we must bear in mind that the people are not fighting for ideas in anyone's head. They are fighting to gain material benefits. They are fighting to live a better life and to guarantee a better life for their children. Close quote. That is the foundation of any liberation struggle. That is the basis of any party that wants to be in government. But the former liberation movement has forgotten this basic principle. That the people want material benefits. What are material benefits? Material benefits is jobs. When you work, you are able to buy material benefits for your family. Material benefits is entre entrepreneurship and participating in the mainstream economy of the country. The former liberation movement has forgotten that. They have forgotten that they promised South Africans a better life. Apartheid handed them over a working country. The railways were working. They are no longer working. The offices in the townships that will respond to your plumbing and electrical and road problems were in a working condition. They are no longer working. The hospitals we're in a working condition. Our hospitals are death dens right now. In fact, patriots, the ANC has passed a vote of no confidence on itself. They have come up with a national health insurance, the NHI. The NHI is the ANC government saying, we have given up on managing and running the public health system. We are defeated. We are useless. Therefore, let the people go to the private sector and we will pay with their tax money. That is the ANC giving up on themselves. Patriots, in 2010, what is called the Arab Spring happened in different Arab states. It started in Tunisia. The people woke up one day and they decided to revolt because they were tired of corruption. They were tired of economic stagnation. They were tired of unemployment. They were tired of an economy that did not grow. It is called the Arab Spring. The people went on mass protests. The people bent to overthrow the existing governments. The people were crying for change. And indeed, they changed the government in Tunisia. They changed the government in Bahrain. They changed the government in Egypt. They changed the government in Morocco and many other Arab states. It is called the Arab Spring. The 29th of May is our Arab Spring. We are not going to protest. We are not going to ban. But our vote must change this government. Our vote must bring the necessary change that our country needs. The 29th of May is indeed our Arab Spring. Mohammed Al Rashid Maktoum, who is the ruler of Dubai, warned the Arab presidents in 2004. He told them that their lies 
will not go a long way. The people are sick and tired. The problem with the president, they believed in their own lies. They believed that the people will forever vote for them. And when that revolution happened, it caught them by surprise. Like them, the ANC believes in its own lies that it is the leader of society when it is leaderless. The ANC believes in its own lies that it is going to empower our people when they only empower their stomachs. The ANC believes in its lies that they will create jobs when they could not even pay their employees at Lutuli House. The ANC believes in its lies that they are the right leaders, yet they are forever arrested and going into prisons, going to courts answering for corruption. The ANC believes in its lies that it can cleanse itself, yet corruption is part of their DNA. Like the Arab people, let 29th of May be our Arab Spring. Let our vote change this country. Let us go at and knock and each and every door. Go and tell your neighbor. Go and tell your friends. Go and tell your families. Go and tell your enemies that the change is on the 29th of May. The economic policy of the ANC has made our people poor and a few rich white people richer. The economic policy of the ANC has destroyed our public schools. The economic policy of the ANC has destroyed our public health system. The economic policy of the ANC has destroyed our public safety institutions. And every time a public school does not function, you must now take out of your pocket and go and take your children to the private schools. And it is your money that is paying. Every time the public hospitals don't function, you must take a medical aid and go to private hospitals. It takes from your pockets. Every time the police don't fight crime, you want to stay in a, in a suburb that has got private security. It takes out of your pocket. The ANC's economic policy makes the private sector richer and our people poorer. The ANC model of government is to destroy everything that is owned by South Africans and hand it over to the private sector. They wanted to sell SAA that was working. That was one of the best airlines in the world. They now want to sell ESCOM. They are destroying Telcom. They want MTN to buy a piece of ESCOM, of, of, of Telcom. They are destroying Transnet because they want to give it to the private sector. They are destroying Prasa. They want to give it to the private sector. They have given our minerals away to illegal immigrants after they've given them to foreign companies. The policy of government of the ANC wants to make a few white people richer and the majority of our people poorer. The 29th of May has to become our Arab Spring. Patriots, when I take over as the premier, after you vote for me on the 29th of May, we must we must remember that this month was chosen by the superpowers. It is the 29th of May Kenzie. It is the 29th of May Kenzie. Because the incoming president is Mackenzie. 
Patriots and South Africans, businesses have left Gauteng because of crime, because of lack of political will to create a sound business atmosphere. Some have gone to Naisna, some have gone to KZN, some have gone to, Deb, uh, to Cape Town. When business leaves the province, our young people remain unemployed. The economy of our province gets affected. When I take over, the first thing that I'm going to do is to call all business people in the different regions so that we can discuss how do we move this country forward? How do we move this province forward? I'm going to encourage business people to come back so that we can create jobs. I'm going to make sure that we fight crime wherever it shows its ugly head. I'm going to make sure that Gauteng is the cleanest province in this country. <laughs> Businesses have lost confidence in giving our SMMEs an opportunity. When you look at developed countries, SMMEs account for almost 90% of revenue. They are the biggest employers in the developed countries. In this country, the SMMEs only account for 20 to 24%. Yet, there are about five families, a few companies, that accounts for 86% of our economy. This has to change in Gauteng. Business must understand that they cannot monopolize everything. Bidvest must understand that cleaning is for our mothers. Cleaning is our people. Cleaning can be given to a big corporate like Bidvest. Check us, spa. And ShopRite must understand and pick and pay. They must decide in Gauteng whether they want to be a supermarket or a bottle store. They can take everything. Our people's businesses are closing down because ShopRite has opened in the township. Local economy is either in the hands of illegal immigrants or it is in the hands of those who are monopolizing our economy who stay in Stellenbosch. That has to change in Gauteng. Patriots, businesses are not paying what they are supposed to pay as revenue to our metros, to our municipalities. That time will be over when Kenyukunene is the premier. I am going to encourage all businesses around Gauteng to subcontract our SMMEs who come from our areas. I am going to encourage them to subcontract our SMMEs even when it comes to recruitment. They must be able to understand that the growth of their businesses and the stability of their businesses is dependent on the growth of our SMMEs. When more people are employed, there is more buying power in that province. When there is more buying power in a province, the economy of that province becomes strong and strengthened. And jobs can be created. People are able to buy houses. People are able to buy cars. When the majority of our people in the provinces are working. But when people are not working, all the industries suffer. Because money is held by few people who can buy 100 houses each. So it's very important that we stimulate the economy of Gauteng for job creation and for SMME development. 
Law and order is at the center of what PA stands for. Crime is normal in Gauteng. You can't even walk from your house to a house that is number five from yours. Right between number five and your house, you get robbed. You get marked. Children disappear. Kidnapping is not a crime of South Africans. The foreigners has brought this crime into our shores. They mutilate our children and sell their body parts. They mutilate adults and sell their body parts. They have brought barbaric tendencies in our country. I am going to talk to business that we must have a fund that will be run by auditors that businesses who contribute must choose. I don't want to touch that money. But all businesses must contribute to this fund so that when people report crime, we can pay them. So that when people report crime and they provide evidence, this particular fund can pay them. I don't have to touch it. Their auditors must pay the people that have reported crime. I want every second citizen to be a whistleblower. I want every second citizen to be an impimpi of brutal crimes. When a woman is screaming, they must call the police. When this guy is arrested and is convicted, they must be paid. Our people must be crime busters themselves. But we must pay them. I have already engaged a few big businesses and they said we will buy in because we are also affected by this crime. I will speak about crime later again. Our infrastructure Our infrastructure is dilapidated. The current government always builds, whether it's libraries, whether it's clinics, whether it's police stations, they are always building because there's money to be stolen in construction. But after they build, they maintain nothing. They don't maintain our infrastructure. The road infrastructure of Houghton is in shambles. I will talk about what I have done in the city of Johannesburg in the last 12 months as the MMC of transport. Our road infrastructure is in shambles. The reason they don't want to maintain the infrastructure is because they can't steal with maintenance. Because with maintenance, you employ people in that area. They must go and cut the grass. They must go and paint. They must go and clean. You can't steal when you are paying people. That's why they are not maintaining our railway roads, our railways. That's why they are not maintaining our bridges. That's why they are not maintaining our roads, our buildings, our institutions. Go and look at the metro center of the city of Johannesburg, a world-class African city. The grass is in the middle of a paved way. It is so dirty and filthy. How are they going to clean yours when they can't just clean theirs? Where they are going to work? That is the same thing in Eguhuleni, in Tswani, City Bank and West End. Our infrastructure will create jobs. Once we employ people to clean our infrastructure, to maintain our infrastructure, we will create thousands and thousands of jobs. Not this nonsense that the premier, the temporary premier is busy doing. 
of employing people, giving them temporary jobs, like his position is a temporary premier. He is worse. Banyaza Lisufi is worse than those who came before him. He pays people with vouchers because he has gone to speak to ShopRite to, 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 to spar for people to come and buy groceries with vouchers. He's giving people food parcels because a voucher can only buy you food. A voucher can only buy you groceries at a shop right or a spa. He makes people to work for a food parcel and gives them 2,000 voucher to go and buy at these supermarkets. So Banyaz Ali Sufi is still encouraging the growth of the monopolies at the expense of our people. Don't be fooled by this Nazi Spani. After the elections, all those people will be jobless. He is paying more for uniform than what he must pay them. That is a fluke. We will create permanent jobs where people can be able to pay UIF, they can be, pay, be able to pay pension, so that when they lose their jobs, they are able to still get pension and claim from their UIF. I have spoken about our health institutions. Batwadi, May Mensa, Bontati, young people, all governments are expected by their citizens to provide quality and excellent health care, to build houses for them, to provide public safety for them. None of that is happening in Gauteng. Young people have been made jokes. They were taken to Pretoria. They were trained for a few weeks. They were not even put on diet. And they are, they are expected to come and fight crime without guns. They are expected to come and face the brutal criminals without guns. We will train our people with our national service. We will take our young people when they finish school, when they don't finish school, to go to the military where their skills will be developed so that when they come back, they are disciplined. Our clinics don't have medication. Our clinics don't have doctors. Our hospitals are in shambles. Zimbabwean pregnant women get on the bus at Bait Bridge, heavily pregnant at eight months, nine months. They come here to the park station. They walk to Rahima Musa Hospital. Our South African pregnant women lie on the floor. And the Zimbabwean pregnant women pay nurses 1,000 rands so that they can move in front and go and deliver. That is what our health care system, our health system is giving to our people. We have seen doctors, we have seen doctors who have cried that they are unemployed. And this government is refusing to employ them. So our government wants us to die. But let me tell you what they want. As I said, the national health insurance is going to make more money for private clinics. You must be a very stupid human being, a very evil human being, not to take billions and make your public health system work, but instead leave public hospitals in shambles and go and pay the private uh, clinics and private hospitals to do your job. So the ANC has given up on itself. Let us go and tell people that we must assist them to get out of power. Hospitals in Gauteng are going to change. The premier has got an oversight role that he must play. We have a problem of water. 
Not only in Haman's kraal, not only in Tuani. We also have a problem of water here in the city of Johannesburg. Pipes are leaking. They know which pipes are leaking. They know where pipes are leaking. They want to blame rainwater. I went to rainwater with the TG of the party. And rainwater presented to us a model that will work for our water supply in the city of Johannesburg. They don't want to implement it. Because they want to keep giving tenders to people who are doing nothing and keeping our people thirsty and desperate for water. People in Soweto, we have seen on TV that they were buying water. That must come to an end. People in Soweto are buying water from the private sector. That is a creation of this ANC government. We are suffering from load shedding. Load shedding destroys the appliances of the poor. Load shedding destroys equipment of businesses. Businesses are leaving this country because of load shedding. And this government has got no clue how to resolve this problem. Banyazali Sufi, a copycat, has now come up with a solar energy. He has appointed the city power to roll out solars in the whole of Gaute. City power can even manage power of the city of Johannesburg. They are giving more work to city power. Let me tell you why. City Power started this thing of solar panels. They bought solar panels. They have put them in a warehouse. They have chosen City Power because the ANC of Panyaza has no power in Tswani over energy. They have no power in Ekuhuleni over energy. So they won't be able to steal. They have given it to City Power, which is run by the ANC in the city of Johannesburg. They are going to, the companies are going to invoice for solar panels, but the companies are not going to buy solar panels. They are going to take those solar panels that are at the warehouse of city power, and they are going to use them in Eguhuleni, in Tswani, and all over else. And the money that they have invoiced is going to go to all these corrupt politicians in this province. The corruption of these people is at another level. Patriots, load shedding must be something of the past. I have proposed mechanisms to the city of Johannesburg. However, they are not interested but once I become the premier, we will implement those mechanisms. And Gauteng, and Gauteng will be free from load shedding. Patriots, we have royal leaders that have for a long time been used and been lied to by the ANC. Contra Lesa has been an ANC tool to manage their anger. They have now broken away and formed Rolesa. As the premier, I am going to support, I'm going to support our royal leaders in Gauteng. Because the royal leaders are the custodians of our traditions and culture. The royal leaders are the ones who give and maintain family values. We must support them. We must strengthen them. We must elevate them. We must take them out of the shame that they have seen for so long. Patriots, as I conclude, the problems of employment are being deliberately caused by the ANC and by the big corporates. 
the big firms and factories are no longer employing our young people. Because South Africans know their rights. South Africans cannot be exploited. South Africans cannot be called in derog derogatory names. So they are employing illegal immigrants. The ANC has allowed slavery to come into this country because an illegal immigrant has no rights. An illegal immigrant cannot argue with the employer even when they abuse them. As the premier, I am going to remove all of them. We are the only country in the world where illegal immigrants hijack buildings of ordinary citizens and they hijack buildings of government and government does nothing. The ANC government does nothing. They enjoy illegal immigrants. Patriots, when this country was colonized, those who colonized us named the streets and the towns after themselves, after the countries and the towns where they come from. We have heard that Nigerians in Sunnyside wants to call Sunnyside Little Lagos. This is, this is another form of colonization. They start with naming our areas, our suburbs after themselves. The Minister of Home Affairs, the very clueless Minister of Home Affairs, says mayors must go and do an audit of tax shops that are owned by the Pakistanis. Hey, Emma. The minister says the mayors must be auditors of illegal foreigners from Pakistan and Bangladesh. When I become the premier, I'm going to halve the traffic department I am going to partner with the mayors of each and every metro and municipality. We don't need an audit. We are going to Sunnyside. We are going to remove them. We are going to put them into trucks. We are taking them to Bay Bridge. We are taking them to Mozambican border. We are going. We are going to Hillbro. We are going to Uville. We are going to, e to Inner City. We are going to Rasatanville. We are going to Runbeck. We are going to every suburb because we know where these criminals are. We don't need an audit. The minister is buying time for elections. After elections, they will be quiet. Patriots, South Africans, I am not talking promises here. I am talking commitments. I showed in two days of being the mayor, in two days of acting as the mayor of Johannesburg, I acted on a Sunday and Monday. That Sunday, I called the MMC of Public Safety. I called the MMC of Human Settlement, our TG. I said, TG, I hear there's a building called Casamia. It falls under your department. We are going to war there. At 6 o'clock, we are at Casamia. The following day, we are at Casamia. And we did six more buildings. We were evacuating people at Vanil Court. Illegal foreigners were jumping out of the windows when they heard Kenny Kunene is around. The Ethiopian, the Ethiopian who held a girl, an 18-year-old girl from the free state as a sex slave in a shack 
on top of a hijacked building. We broke those chains. We found this young girl with a bucket full of urine and feces in a one-room shack. We found a newspaper with her faces. This guy locks her in the morning. He comes back at night. And she is his sex slave. We freed that girl from that bondage. We chased all those Ethiopians out of that building. But because I'm the only one with the political will, myself and the MMC of Human Settlement, we are the only ones who wants to read our buildings of illegal foreigners. We are not getting support. A building bent. People died. Banyaza came in his shirts that make him like a little fake Mandela. After a building has killed people, he came there, little fake Mandela, with Mandela shirts. He came there, he set up a commission. Patriots, EMS and JMPD arrested a young man who confessed that he was fighting with someone and he poured petrol on this guy and bent him. And that's how the building got bent. What is the commission doing? The police have arrested this boy. What is a commission doing? Panyaza is taking after his president. They set up commissions to steal money. They set up useless commissions that act like courts with no teeth. That's how they steal our money. That building does not need a commission. A crime has been committed. It must go to court. They must prosecute. Simple. He left little fake Mandela. The buildings that are unsafe are still there. And Kenny Kunene, when he becomes the, the premier of Gauteng, Patriots, citizens of Gauteng, I give you a commitment. Gauteng will be a no-go zone for illegal immigrants. There will not be one house. There will not be one building that is hijacked by criminals, whether South African or foreign. There will be no one building. That is hijacked. Patriots, our people in Heidelberg chased Pakistanis and Bangladeshis out of their townships. Those who went to set up tax shops are being killed by the Pakistanis. They are being killed by the Bangladeshis. They are telling them the tax shops are theirs. The South African police and the ANC government are doing nothing. There is only one way of dealing with these Pakistanis. Fire by fire. Fire by fire. We must set up a task team that is well trained. When you take out a gun, when that team comes, they must be trained to shoot one thing and one thing only. The head. The head. They are not there to arrest. You cannot arrest an illegal foreigner that's holding a gun. Because his purpose is to shoot. I will set up a task team 
that will go and get trained. A task team of snipers. Theirs is to take the head. The police mortuary must come and collect permanent solution. There will be no criminal that will point a gun at a police officer. You point a gun in Gauteng, they must call that task team. Their job is one, the head. The head. And they will not be arrested because they will be established outside of the constitution. Countries are doing that. That is why crime is being dealt with. Kahame in Rwanda has turned Rwanda around. Kigali is the cleanest city in Africa because the president has fought crime. He even locks you up when you pee on the street. We must bring order in our country. But the first call is to get rid of illegal immigrants. When I say Abba, Uti Abba, Uti Hambe, when I say Abba, Uti Hambe, Abba, 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 Patriots, I woke up this morning and as I prayed and I opened my Bible, my eyes fell on a verse, on a chapter of Isaiah that I must share with you. But before I share it with you, some critics are saying, what have you done as the MMC of transport? So I don't want to talk. I don't want to be a big mouth. I want to talk the numbers. That you can go and check at JRA. I want to talk the work. That you can go and check at Metrobus. At Transport Department. What I have achieved in 12 months. I found a dysfunctional JRA. I found a dysfunctional Metrobus. I found a dysfunctional Transport Department. With the officials, the first thing I did was to tell the CEO to fire the whole region who were on strike for bonuses. I said a bonus is a favor. If you can't fix potholes over bonuses for two months, fire them. If they are not at work the following day, fire them, dismiss them. The following day, they were all back at work and they are the hardest working region as we speak. And they got bonuses this past December. Patriots, I established what I called hashtag Operation Restore, hashtag Operation Lukisa, hashtag Operation Lungisa, hashtag Operation Star. With that operation, I will attack a particular region and I will bring half of other regions to join us so that we can do more roads, we can do more stormwater, we can do more KIs, we can do more uh, uh, potholes, we can do more resurfacing of the roads. The statistics that I'm going to give you have never been done in the past 30 years by anyone. At JRA. When it comes to damaged and missing road barriers and guardrails, we repaired and replaced the guardrails. With my Operation Restore, we repaired 1,738 guardrails and road barriers only with the operation. And remember, the operation does not happen every day. With the daily work, 
that happens at JRA together with my Operation Restore. We repaired 4,887 guardrails in the city of Johannesburg. When it comes to blocked stormwater, cap inlets, KIs, we repaired 2,206 with my operation. And together with JRA, we repaired 5,091 stormwater and KIs that were blocked. There are missing JRA manhole covers. We replaced them, made them safe. We did 104, 272 uh, total were replaced because they steal, the, they steal the steel that comes on top of those. So we got 100% turnaround there. Damaged. Damaged and missing traffic signals that you call robots. With Operation Restore, we restored 2,623 traffic signals. And together with JRA normal operations, we repaired 4,928 traffic signals that have been vandalized. The potholes that we repaired in this period of 12 months with operation restore alone we repaired 25,001 potholes in the city of Joburg and together with JRA daily operations we repaired 47,237 potholes patriots we resurfaced the roads that were damaged. With Operation Restore, we resurfaced 24 kilometers of roads that we resurfaced. And together with daily operations of JRA, we resurfaced 57 kilometers of road infrastructure. We surfaced gravel roads in our townships in the city of Johannesburg. With Operation Restore, we did 16.60 kilometers of gravel roads that we surfaced. And together with the daily operations of JRA, we resurfaced 434.65 kilometers of gravel roads that we have put roads, tar roads on them. That is the distance to Bloemfontein, patriots. It is not a child's play. The province under Panyaza can't just fix Bayas Nodier. The province under Panyaza, they took five years to fix a bridge at Hendrik Potchiter. It took me 12 months to put gravel roads, tar roads, for a distance from here to Bloemfontein. Patriots, that is only in 12 months. And let me tell you, because I speak the truth to my patriots, the regional chairperson of the ANC in the city of Johannesburg, Dada Murero, is also the MMC of finance. He instructed the CFOs not to give JRA money so that I cannot do the work that I am supposed to do. He thinks that he is, he is stopping me to fail. But what he doesn't realize is that he is failing even his own members because service delivery can happen on their streets. They are withholding money from me, from my department, because I spent every cent of that money on our roads, on our bridges. I wrote to the president of this country, the MEC of Transport in Gauteng, and also to the Minister of Public Works. 
I gave them a business case that showed all the bridges that are about to collapse. Only 8% of the bridges in the city of Johannesburg are in excellent condition. 92 bridges collapse anytime. They have refused to give me money since last year, March, since I wrote that business case. I am told that Public Works wanted to give me infrastructure grant. The officials there wanted to give me 400 million to JRA so that JRA can do more gravel roads. JRA can rehabilitate all the buildings. Banyaz Ali Sufi called them on a Saturday and he told them if that man is given to JRA, they are going to decampaign him because Kenukunene is contesting to be premier and Kenukunene is going to look good. He refused, Banyaz Ali Sufi, for service delivery to happen in the city of Johannesburg. He can't claim to love the people of Johannesburg. The ANC leaders are not interested in service delivery. They cannot do it. So when I do it, they decide to keep money away from me. But the 29th of May must be our Arab Spring. And the change of government must happen. Patriots, there's an asphalt plant that was bought for 60 million that produces asphalt that must go onto our roads. It can produce 200 tons of asphalt. It was standing there as a white elephant. They were buying asphalt from the private sector. I recommissioned that asphalt in six months. The problems were fixed. Now that asphalt is producing the asphalt that we are putting on our roads and it is still working under my watch. We have fixed Mapumulo Bridge in Soweto. That could not be fixed. We have fixed Fine Town Bridge where every time it rains, primary school children cannot go to school as they would go to school in Ward 6, coming from Ward 7. You can go and look at that bridge. This is how it was. This is how it is. We have put bigger pipes. We have made sure. And God, being God, made sure that before this launch, there's a flood. When it flooded last week, the children walked on top of that bridge going to school because there was no flooding. Patriots, the club sprayed Valley Road, which is the main road when you pass Orlando Stadium, going to pass the hostels, could not be finalized for a long time. Patriots, within three months of myself being the MMC, I launched that road, and that road has been working since. A private company that is contracted by the city to run Reavaya was on the brink of collapse. It was about to go bankrupt. 299 families came to me. They begged me to help them. I want to tell you now, I am the first politician to get a company that was dying, that was in the ICU, and I take it out of the ICU, not only out of the ICU, but out of hospital. Piotrans today is getting 45 buses so that they can make more money. These are 299 families in Soweto that would have gone without an income. I introduced Metro bus inspectors. These are former Metro bus employees who were retrenched. I went to fetch them because they know the game. They are now inspecting buses so that drivers don't steal money, put it into their pockets. They also inspect buses 
so that these buses don't take the routes that they are not meant for them. These inspectors have started the work and we are seeing the bearing of fruits. I have also installed automated for collection, free Wi-Fi, sushi Wi-Fi in the metro buses. When you get in a metro bus, ask them for the Wi-Fi and the password. It is all free. So that when you are approaching home, you can WhatsApp your, your wife or your husband. I am about to arrive, my darling. Please warm my food. I am so hungry. We have also included the cameras in the metro buses. A metro bus was hijacked, but because of the use of these cameras and our security system that was installed, that I launched, we recovered that metro bus within no time. We can now see criminals when they terrorize passengers of metro bus through the cameras that we call an eye on the bus. These things never happened before I arrived. Patriots, we had a flat plan for the first time at JRA. In many years, the people of El Dorado Park and Soweto and Enadale saw JRA employees working overnight during flooding in January. That is the work ethic that I have introduced at Transport. I am also granting user rights to the taxi associations, Sanko and NTA, so that they can manage all the taxis in the city of Johannesburg. They have showed me two taxi ranks that they are managing, the Runback taxi rank and the Orange Farm taxi rank. In those two taxi ranks, there is no crime, the taxi ranks are clean. I took this report to council. Dada Murero instructed the caucus of the ANC not to vote for that report. And the taxi association executives were there. But it will pass. He likes it or not. So the taxi ranks will be mostly managed by the taxi associations as part of our stakeholder empowerment. But I gave them one request. There must be no foreigner that is trading on all those taxi ranks. South Africans must go and trade there. They must remove them. And they have given me their weight that they will remove them. Patriots, I have partnered with Investec, with Standard Bank, with Vodacom, with MTN, with NetBank, with Blue Label Telecommunications, and many more. Around Santin, Midland, and Inner City, when the robots go off because of load shedding, these companies have allowed us to plug into their backup generators. Discovery is also one of them, and our robots remain on even when there is load shedding. We are continuing, we are continuing to spread this particular partnership. So when I say I'm going to partner with the private sector to pay the whistleblowers, I'm not talking a pipe dream. I see it with the CEOs of all these companies. I see it with the people that are on the ground. And I've invited them to help us to help them. They are prepared to join us to make sure that Gauteng is a better place for everyone. I will now share with you what God shared with me this morning. As I conclude, I lit a candle this morning and as I opened the Bible, 
it landed me and my eyes to Isaiah 49. Verse 1 to 7, it reads as follows. Listen, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me from my mother's womb. He has spoken my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hit me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and gather Israel to himself. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have cared. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the, of the earth. This is what the Lord said, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers, kings, and this is what he says to me, kings will see you and stand up. Princes will see and bow down. Because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the verse that God gave to me this morning. God calls me his servant. God heeds me in his protection. God says I must go and gather his tribes. I must go and gather black, colored, Indian, white, gather them together so that we can see the land of Canaan. God has called me his servant. Therefore, I am your servant. And patriots, citizens of Gauteng, my name is Kenukunene, and I raise my hand to be the incoming premier of the richest province in Africa of Gauteng. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want us to all stand up, patriots. I want us to all stand up. I told you the problems of our country and the problems of our province. I gave you the solutions. What I am going to do to solve those problems. I am appealing to you when we live here, let every minute count. Let us mobilize everyone. Let us tell them about an alliance of people who love South Africa. About an alliance of people who love South Africans. We are an alliance. A patriot is someone who loves his country and his communities. So when we say we put South Africans first, it's not a slogan. It is embedded in our name. We live it. It is in our DNA. Let us go and tell everybody that our colored brothers and sisters are Africans. Because the ANC and the EFF say they are fighting for blacks only, for blacks in, in general, and 
for Africans in particular. When you ask them, who is an African and who is black? They say blacks are colored, blacks and Indians. You say who is an African? They say it's black people who are African. How confusing. Today, I want to say colored people are Africans. This is the only continent that they know. They are our brothers and sisters. We must stand together. We must be Africans together. We are going to fight in the townships together. We are going to fight in all the communities. God has called me to gather all his tribes. When I say, Abba, you say, Hambe. Abba. 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 I want them to hear us in Sunnyside, in Jamiston, in Campton Park, in Hillbrow, in the inner city. Abba! 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 Now we are going to see my favorite song. But for those who don't know it, I must give you the lyrics. You know it. But I must give it to you the PA way. It is. E P A Yami, O Nukana, Yo, E P A Yami, O Nukana, Ye, Gis, Giong, Pagate Parliament. So it says Pagati a Parliament. So Genana, Yo, Pagati a Parliament. Then they say Yachiga, Gemanch, Masia Chiga, it. No ma kunzima, no ma kunzima, no ma kuye nyu kago tipi e ya mingi o na na yo pagate parliament. If I say ya chiga food, ya kuta hap. Eri ha yo matata, ha yo mata. Hayo mata ta hayo mo pi e ilinte hayo mata ta mo pi e ilinte now let's go e p e ya me go nyuga na yo p e ya me go nyuga na i ba me. Que santa guiongena pagate ipi e ya me go nyuga na yo ipi e ya me go nyuga na gipambe que santa No ma kunzima, no ma kunzima, no ma kuye nyu kako tipi e yami kiyonge na na yo pagate ha yo mata ta ha yo mata ta ta ha yo mata. Tahayo Mopi E ilinte Hey matata Hayo Hayo Matata Hayo Matata Hayo Mopi E ipi E yami Konyuka na yo Pi Konyuka na Pabe kesa tadi yonge na na yo pagate ipi e ya me konyuga na yo pi e ya me konyuga na di pabe 
Tandi yoke na na yo Paga No ma kuzima Kuzima No ma kuye nyu Kako tipi e ya mingi yoke na Pagat Salut pie salut Salut pie salut Salut Mackenzie salut Salut President Mackenzie salut Salut all our premier salut Salut all our premier salut Salut PA salut Salut Houten salut 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 Houten salut Salut Houten salut Salut Houten salut Salut Houten salut Salut Swani salut Salut Egurulani salut Salut Johannesburg salut Salut City Ben salut Salut Western salut Pagama PA Pagama Pagama PA Pagama Hula PA Hula Hula PA Hula Whoa 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 Wow! 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 Wow for we are ready. Thank you very much. So three sixty experience with Thomas M.